Welcome back to the series. In this video, I will show you a new eDesign Suite feature. Starting from an eDesign Suite project, it is now possible to simulate the device operation with eDSim. In the Power Supply Design Tools, let's navigate to DC DC Converter, Non Isolated, and Buck. Let's start by setting the application's required conditions. Let's select L6983 with fixed V-out and start the design. eDesign Suite has automatically generated your application based on the specified conditions. As you can see, the efficiency for the maximum required load is higher than 90%. The Bode diagram shows a phase margin of 70 degrees. To activate the new feature I want to show you, click Export for EDSIM in the menu. An EDSIM pop-up window appears. If you have not done so before, first download and install the tool. Now that you have EDSIM installed, name your eDesign Suite project and click Download. Now, unzip the downloaded project file and double-click on the .bat file. Press the OK button. And now you will see your eDesign Suite project schematic on the simplest main page. First, let's start a simulation based on standard parameters. On the right, you'll find a plot of the most important device features, including inductor current and V-out behavior during the soft start procedure. In order to explore the device behavior, let's change some simulation parameters. Increase the stop time from 2 to 4 milliseconds. Start saving data when the soft start procedure has expired, around 1.7 milliseconds. Press OK. Delete all existing plots and start the simulation again. Once the simulation is finished, zoom into the plot to see the resulting inductor current and output voltage ripple. At this point, try to activate the spread spectrum feature. In the schematic, let's change the connection of the FSW pin from ground to VCC. Run the simulation again without deleting the previous plot. As the simulation expires, zoom back to full. You can see how the spread spectrum slightly increased the V-out ripple. By keeping the previous simulation plot, you are able to compare the before and after of changes you make. Let's now see what happens on the regulated V-out during a fast line transient. For example, 10 volt over one millisecond. To obtain this kind of line transient, we can modify the VIN voltage generator as follows. Now, delete all the plots and restart the simulation. Let me underline the following behaviors. Looking at the top plot, we can see that reducing input voltage resulted in a decrease of the inductor current ripple amount. Looking at the bottom plot, we can see that very low regulated output voltage ripple variations resulted from the fast line transient. This simulated behavior is to be expected as the device implements a peak current mode architecture. Let's now see what happens during a wide and fast load transition. 0.1A over 1 microsecond. For this, select this PWL source current generator and specify the required current as shown.
press OK and connect the current source as shown here. Delete all previous plots and run the simulation again. As seen in the bottom plot, the overshoot and undershoot is in the order of 150 millivolt. Finally, let's see what happens on the regulated V-out during an overcurrent protection. The overcurrent protection can be simulated with an extremely fast load transient, one amper over one millisecond, with a new required current higher than the device OCP threshold. Let's further modify the current generator, adding these values. Delete all the curves and restart the simulation. When the required current is higher than the device's maximum current capabilities, the V-out decreases. As soon as the required current decreases again, the V-out rises to the regulated value. Let's now see how the device implements the light load operation behavior. Now delete all the curves. Restart the simulation. Zoom in at the end of the plot. You will clearly see that under light load operation, the device reduces the switching frequency and slightly increases the regulated output voltage. At this point, if we zoom out, we can see on the same simulation the device behavior under four different application conditions. Line transient, load transition, overcurrent protection, light load operation. Finally, let's see what happens if we expose the device to the same application conditions with a different switching frequency, one megahertz for example. To obtain this, let's add a new resistor between the FSW pin and ground. Let's set its value to 10K. One more time, run the simulation. The following can be observed. At the top curve, we observed that a higher switching frequency resulted in a reduced inductor current ripple amount. Zooming into the bottom plot, we also see that the output voltage ripple is half the amount it was before at the previous switching frequency. We will see you in the next episode.